Hi, yes, hello everyone, I'm Gavin.js, and today we're going to be talking once again about all of the solids. You see, on my first how to make all of the solids in Geometry Nodes video, I got a lot of really good feedback, and I appreciate that. And I got several comments telling me how I could do it better, because it could be better. Specifically this one, which outlines a really good way for how to make all of the solids. So I figured, why not go over this method and also talk about how it applies to so much more that can be done in Geometry Nodes. And we're going to talk about the Asset Browser because it's something that I've at least been underutilizing. And it's going to take our node tree from looking like this to something much simpler. We're also going to talk about a couple of different options and a future feature that I really hope gets implemented into Geometry Nodes. But with all of that said, let's hop into it. Okay, hopping into Blender, I've set up three cubes here and two icospheres. And these will be the base for all of our different platonic solids. Let me just rename these accordingly. And let's start with the tetrahedron. Well, I've talked about a few different ways to construct a tetrahedron before. This is by far the simplest method. All we're going to do is delete four of the eight vertices of our cube. And that'll give us four vertices that are all equidistant from each other. After that, we just need to fill all of our different faces, and we've got ourselves a tetrahedron. Of course, it's not the traditional orientation of the tetrahedron, but personally, I prefer this because it more clearly illustrates that all of our vertices are equidistant from the center. However, if you prefer the traditional look, all we need to do is rotate this by 45 degrees on our X and 36.26 on the Y. That gives us the familiar tetrahedron orientation that we all know and love. All we have left to do is set our radius because our initial cube had an edge length of two. So we're going to use the new tool operator that we have in geometry nodes as of 4.0 in order to set our radius. I'm just going to drop down my spherize node, which if you haven't seen before is fairly straightforward. This is all that's going on inside. And now we can use this new operator by hopping back into edit mode, selecting all of our geometry and hitting this little page looking button here. And then we can go down to set radius. And that gives us this pop up that has the option that I enabled and it defaults to one. So we're going to leave it as is. Now we hop out of edit mode and we have a nice properly scaled tetrahedron. Now moving on to our cube, you would think this would be perfectly fine, but as I mentioned before, this has an edge length of two, which is not a radius of one. So we're going to do the same thing, hop into edit mode, hit our set radius tool, and there we go, now it's scaled properly. Moving on to our octahedron, this is fairly straightforward, but instead of setting our radius, what we want to do is make a new tool to create the dual of this mesh. So we're going to make a new tool, name it create dual, and all we need to do is drop in a dual mesh node. What the dual operation does is it inverts our faces and our vertices such that when we hop into edit mode, go up to our tool options, and hit create dual, we can see that our faces and our vertices have flipped. And again, because our cube had an edge length of two, that means that the dual actually does have a radius of one, so we don't need to set the radius on our octahedron. Next up is our icosahedron, which is just an icosphere with a radius of one and one subdivision which is exactly how I set it on creation. So this is already our perfect icosahedron. Then lastly, we have our dodecahedron, which is the dual of the icosahedron. So we just need to create dual and then set radius. And there is our dodecahedron. And that's it. Those are all of our platonic solids all set up nice in a line for us. So what we're going to do is take our collection and just rename it solids. But of course that was very manual and we don't want to have to do all of that anytime we want any of these particular shapes, especially not when we're working in geometry nodes. So now let's start building our platonic solids node. And in order to do this, I'm going to drop down a plane to act as our dummy geometry to create our node and make sure that it's outside of our solids collection. For now, I'm just going to make the solids collection invisible and we can switch back to modifier and start working on our plane. So in order to make this work, we need to either use 
the object node or the collection info node. I'll show you how to make both, but we're going to start off with the collection info node. So let's get our collection info node in and select our solids collection. And already we can see that we have all of them, but notice that we have instances here. So none of these are real geometry. Also, it's important to note that we have all five of our solids and they're all in their original positions. In order to just get one of our solids, we're going to instance them on points and create a single point. So let's drop in our points node and our instance on points node. Take your points and run it into points and the collection into instance. Now we see that we still have all five of our solids and that's because it's still instancing the entire collection. So to fix this, what we're going to do is hit separate children and pick instance. So now because we have one point and its index is zero, we're only getting the tetrahedron. And that's great, but we need to be able to control which solid we want to use. So in order to do that, we're going to take our group input and change this input from geometry to integer. I'm also going to rename that solid selection and run that integer into our instance index. Now, if we come over to our modifiers tab, we can see that at the moment, this is still set to zero, which is our tetrahedron. But if we increase this, suddenly we'll get our cube, our octahedron, our dodecahedron and our icosahedron and of course it looks like they did it in the wrong order in the viewport that's just because i made them in the wrong order but they did it in the correct order as far as index is concerned the only thing we have left to do here is to make sure we realize our instances otherwise we won't ever actually have any real geometry and we won't be able to do anything useful with any of these solids and there you have it that is all of the logic we need to make our platonic solids node there are a few more things we need to do before this is really done, but there's no more crazy node logic like I did in the last video with all kinds of weird creating attributes and deleting attributes, instancing and deleting extras and all of that. None, none of that here, just simply instancing the correct geometry on a single point. So first off, while scrolling through all of our solids, we can see that, uh, well, they're all offset. And that's because I offset each of the objects on the X axis in order to better visualize all of them together. So we just need to clear all of that out real quick. So now if we scroll through all of these, we'll see that they all instance in at the correct spot. Another issue is we can scroll way past four, which should be the maximum index we're able to look at. What's interesting though, is that it looks like it takes the mod of whatever input and uses that index. And I don't remember that being the case when I first built this, but maybe 4.0 updated something so that that's how it works now. Either way, we don't really want to be able to go down to negative 25 or up to 224. We want to cut off this value at zero and four. So in order to do that in our group settings here, we can just set whatever we want the default to be. I'm going to leave that at zero and then change the minimum to be zero and our maximum to be four. The last thing we need to do is to rename our node group, and then we can right click in the name and hit mark as asset. That means that this node group is now saved to our asset browser. So if we go from our geometry node editor over to the asset browser, we can see in our unassigned assets, we have our platonic solids node. From here, you can move this into any group you want, or you can make your own. For instance, I have my own g.js asset group, and here I have a whole bunch of my own custom nodes. But most importantly, because this is saved in this blend file, you need to make sure to save this somewhere that it'll be able to work. I say this because I've found that if I save this in the same folder that I keep all of my projects, Blender has a hard time finding and registering that for whenever I open up new blend files. So I recommend saving this in some folder above your project folder. For instance, I have my projects here and next to my projects folder, I have my asset files. And this is where I keep all of the different blend files that I have different assets in. Generally speaking, it's better to have all of your assets in one file or as few files as possible. So eventually I'm going to go through, clean everything up, condense all of my assets down into one file 
just because then it's easier for Blender to search through everything and find all of the assets because they're all in one place instead of having to look through multiple different files to find everything. And I say that because you can't just create an asset project file somewhere on your computer and expect Blender to be able to find it. What you need to do is come over here to edit in preferences and then down here in the file paths you have to actually set the path for the folder that you want Blender to search in. So I have like a plant library that I've downloaded and I have my own asset files that is set to look in this folder location. So it uses this to look at that folder and then inside that folder it goes through each and every blend file. So the asset browser is really powerful because while I've been using it for my different node groups and I was aware that you could use it for a bunch of different assets just sitting in a scene in one of your blend files, I didn't realize that we had things like the object node and the collection info node to be able to use the different objects in our scene in our node groups. That means that any geometry you want to be able to reuse, like say a plants library or your platonic solids or whatever else that you want to be able to reuse, you can use the asset browser not just to be able to drop them into a scene wherever you want, but also to be able to use them in your node trees to be able to then instance whatever you want, wherever you want, modify it with your different node logic, however you want to use it. I'll have more videos in the future talking about this and really utilizing this incredible power, but for now let's just talk about the solids and how much easier it makes our lives. Because like I mentioned, we have the collection node, but we also have the object info node. So if you don't want to create a collection for all of your objects, you can also create a bunch of object info nodes. So here I've got the exact same setup, but with our object info nodes. Everything works the same. We just have more individual nodes pointing specifically at our geometry, and you can specify exactly the objects you want to use, merge those specific pieces together, and join them together with a geometry to instance node, so that then they're all instances, and you can realize them. And all of that. You can, however, make them all instances right here in this node. And in that case, instead of using a geometry to instance node, you'll want to use a join geometry since all of these are instances because the geometry to instance node turns your geometry into instances. But if they're already instances, you can just join them all together. So long as they're all instances before going into the instance on points node, because as you'll see, when we untick as instance for all of these and we're just joining geometry and we're running that right into our instance on points node, since we don't have instances, it's going to throw us an error and tell us we can't use pick instances if we don't have instances and it'll only allow us to instance all of our geometry onto our points. We no longer have that control. So either method is valid. Just make sure that whatever method you use here, you run instances into your instance on points. Now we've gone from this enormous graph with all kinds of crazy logic to create each of our individual platonic solids and then instance them to a much simpler graph where we have everything in a collection and we're creating one point and just instancing and realizing that. And it's a much simpler graph that uses pre-created geometry right in our scene to now a more experimental version that's even simpler. So huge caveat here, I'm working in Blender 4.1 alpha and I have no idea when this is going to be released or if this version will be released with the features that I'm working with here. But you can find it on blender.org along with all of their other daily builds and alpha versions and tests and all of the things that they're currently working on and use it all at your own risk. 
but I heard about this feature that I find exceptionally useful and I'm really excited to have in the next version of Blender, and that is the index switch node. It has bothered me immensely ever since I started working with geometry nodes in Blender that the traditional switch node only has two inputs, regardless of what kind of switch node it is. We only have true and false. I know you can route a bunch of these together to make more complicated switches that have more options and functions, but the logic for that gets overwhelming very quickly in my opinion, and so I'm exceptionally excited <laughs> to have the index switch sometime in the future. I really hope that this feature doesn't get dropped. I don't expect it will because this is an incredibly useful node, but anyway, let's talk about what's going on here. So I've got our object info nodes instead of the collection info node so that we can take each of our individual solids and put them into individual indices here. Then we can take the same index input from our group input that we had in our previous setup and use that to select which one we want. No instancing, no realizing instances. In fact, these aren't instances at all. These are just the original geometry, and it just outputs that. That's it. We've gone from enormous networks that do all kinds of weird logic down to a single switch node in uh, Blender Alpha 4.1. Granted, a lot of that is because I've realized a little bit more of how Blender works, and it's also because they're introducing this new feature. And to demonstrate how this node works in full here, since I just kind of showed you the end product, what it does is it gives us this nice empty socket here at the bottom, just like we have on our input and output nodes. And that means that once we fill up our index 0, our index 1, we can go into this extra one, and it adds another at the end, meaning we can have functionally infinite number of inputs and that's so good and we can run our index into the switch and use that to control what our output is and just like before we can just scroll through these i've set up the same min, min and max values so we can't go below zero or above four but we're able to just do that as I've said multiple times, I'm incredibly excited for this node. This is a feature that just feels like it should be there. I'm really excited for them to officially add this in the next version of Blender. Hopefully they actually do. I don't want to give the impression that this is set in stone. It's absolutely not. But I feel fairly confident that it will be in the next version of Blender. Because yeah, this is just going to make everything so much easier in my opinion. Because I often run into situations where I want a switch node, but I want to be able to have really a case switch node. So yeah, very excited. But anyway, thank you all for watching. I really hope you enjoyed and learned something new. And if you did, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.